Hey everyone, Dave here with another Blu-ray DVD collection update forward slash haul video. This is one for the month of, is this October or November? I'm not too sure, I have got, I have got so much stuff here this month as per usual. So much stuff and I'm quite delayed on a little bit of it. I'll explain that in a minute. Um, so I'm kind of, I've just lost track of everything at the moment, but this is the latest Blu-ray DVD collection update forward slash haul video. And we're gonna get into it because a lot to cover here. So let's do it. All right, so before we get into this, I do want to send out a massive apology to the distributors out there who have been sending in a bunch of stuff to me, as well as the viewers. I know you've been waiting for, I think it's been over a month since I uploaded the last one of these. Uh, here in Melbourne, Australia, we uh, our postal system is absolutely rammed at the moment. We've just come out of a massive lockdown. We had a massive like months and months and months in lockdown and we're finally out. But um, because of that, everyone has been buying stuff online and has absolutely jammed our postal system here. There are delays of three, four, five weeks one, two, I have got a parcel that has been missing for three months. I've got to a point now where I've, I can finally get this video out. So some of these titles again are delayed by maybe a month or so. That's simply down to them getting to me very late and then me having to catch up and watch them all a couple of months worth of stuff. So we will be splitting this month's uh, haul into three videos. We're gonna be doing this one right here, which is the main bunch of stuff that has been sent into, my, uh, into me from my friends over the distributors, uh, basically back catalog titles, all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna be doing a second video, which is the stuff that I have picked up personally for myself this month. That's the extra video here on the extra channel. And I'm also gonna be putting up a video. I've got some imprint titles here from Viavision as well. They'll go in a separate video too. But for today, we've got some titles to take, uh, take a look at from Viavision, from Umbrella, from Random Space Media, and uh, from Madman Entertainment as well. We're gonna take a look at them right away. Before we do though, this is a stack of stuff that's been sent in to me from my good friends over at kicks.com.au. Most of this is back catalog titles that have just been reissued on 4K. Uh, through Universal Sony Pictures Home Entertainment. Um, I will be covering, there's a couple of newer titles in there as well on both Blu-ray, 4K, there's a DVD there as well. I will be covering all of these in a separate video. I'm gonna put these in like my, my part two haul with the stuff that I've bought as well because I feel like they kind of fit in with all that kind of stuff a bit better, but there is a look at the stuff that has been sent in just very briefly. If you want to pick up any of that, you can head over to kicks.com.au and you can use the code DAVE15 at checkout uh, and you can get 15% off your entire order. That includes pre-orders and sales stock as well. So kicks.com.au, DAVE15, you'll get 15% off. But again, I will be covering those in a separate video. Firstly, we've received a singular title from Madman Entertainment. It's in a pop culture box for some reason, but let's get rid of that. Uh, Man Man Entertainment have just released Chopper on Blu-ray. This is a long awaited title for those of us here in Australia, those of us who love collecting our Australian films. Chopper, starring Eric Banner, has never been issued on Blu-ray for one reason or another. It's a 20th anniversary this year, so Mad Man has finally got a Blu-ray edition of this out and can I say, this is absolutely awesome. This is one of the greatest Australian movies ever made. I watched it uh, probably once or twice many, many years ago. This is the first time I've watched it in quite a long time and it still holds up. It is still just one of the greatest, funniest, most entertaining uh, Aussie films ever made. Eric Banner's portrayal of Chopper is just so good. One of the greatest Australian movie performances of all time. Uh, if you don't know about this movie, particularly, I guess most people in Australia will know about this and will know who Chopper Reed is. Uh, but those internationally, you may not have come across this movie. Uh, this is the movie that really did skyrocket uh, Eric Banner into stardom though. So it would be hard not to know about it. But if you don't know about it, Chopper Reed was basically this, uh, this criminal here in Australia. We have this sort of long-standing kind of tradition here in Australia where we tend to glorify our criminals. In, in media for one reason or another. And we just eat it up. The pe people just eat it up, they love it. Um, this guy was an absolute character. He was a total criminal, like kind of worst of the worst, but he was an absolute character. Check this movie out if you can. It is absolutely fantastic, I loved it. This has been, this has undergone a new restoration which looks gorgeous. This is the best the movie has ever looked and it's been treated really, really respectfully to the, in fact, actually I think Madman sent me in 
some stats on the restoration of the film, which I can read out to you. The remastering process involved scanning the interpos, which had a considerable amount of black scratches, dirt, water damage marks, and extremely visually distracting noise in the low-level light scenes, all particularly evident in the first prison section of the film. A certain amount of cleanup and restoration was required for creative and technical acceptance. The filmmakers aimed to find a balance between what was appropriate for cinemas and also on smaller screens, because this one actually did get a, a, a theatrical release as well, this new um, remaster of it. They also took into consideration the sensibilities of viewers in 2021, as opposed to 2000, and their acceptance of the inherent grain. So this is a really beautiful filmic looking movie. The grain that is inherent to the film is there by the sounds of that maybe the grain had been scrubbed out of a previous remaster i'm not too sure uh, and the color balancing and everything has been redone this is like everything that we could have expected it's got some great bonus features on there but they're basically just uh the classic bonus the archival bonus that were pre present on the previous dvd which is a bunch of kind of like little interview pieces with the real chopper him and eric banner and the directors of the film and the writers of the film we kind of sat down together before they made the movie and just had these little weird candid conversations just crazy just crazy stuff and it's really worth taking a look at pick this up I could not recommend this highly enough. Madman's done a terrific job on this, and I'm so glad that Chopper is finally available on Blu-ray, because that's one of the greatest Australian movies ever made. Hands down, it still holds up. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at a few titles that have been sent in from my good friends over at Random Space Media. They've sent in some DVDs, they've sent in some Blu-rays. First up, we'll take a look at these two DVDs right here. Uh, they have recently acquired, I think through Madman, they're actually working with Madman on these, as you can see on the back there. Um, these Cartoon Network titles, they've released quite a few Cartoon Network titles recently. And these two right here are two of the most recent ones. We've got Craig of the Creek, season one to three, which I believe is the entire series. And this one right here, Summer Camp Island, seasons one to three, which I think is the entire series as well. I'm not too sure about this, about that uh, these are two programs i've never watched these are kind of new era cartoon network shows so uh obviously not the kind of cartoon network stuff that i would have grown up with i took a quick look at both of them they're actually really quite fun really quite enjoyable little programs craig of the creek it says follows the life of 10 year old craig williams and his friends kelsey and jp as they go on adventures within the world within a world of untamed kid dominated wilderness known as the creek this one right here summer camp island uh, Oscar and his best friend Hedgehog are dropped off at their first summer camp. Far from their parents, they quickly learn that Summer Camp Island is not a normal summer camp. So those two right there, again, they are actually both really quite fun little shows. I haven't watched a lot of them. Again, so much stuff here that I just haven't had a lot of time to watch absolutely everything. But these two shows look a lot of fun. As you can see, this one in particular is a huge box set right there, and I really love the disc art that's been used on those. So that's, uh, again, I think basically the entire series of that. Summer Camp Island, there are less episodes, so it's not as excessive a box set. But those are the, uh, both of those can be picked up right now through Random Space Media. Another DVD right here is season two of Miracle Workers, Dark Ages. This one has got Daniel Radcliffe, Steve Buscemi in it. Uh, and I've heard of this show, and it's one that I've wanted to watch for a long time, but because I haven't got the first season, I. I feel like I can't just like jump straight into season two. I'm gonna get that first season box, set, uh, that first season set first and watch through. But it looks so fun. Miracle Workers goes back in time for its next instalment, uh, The Dark Ages. Uh, the characters return in new roles and face new challenges as a group of medieval villagers who are trying to stay positive in an age of extreme income inequality, poor healthcare, and widespread ignorance. So I believe it's kind of like one of those shows that kind of jumps, but each season is kind of maybe like Blackadder, how Blackadder was kind of set in different ages, but it's the same characters that kind of um, cross between. And that sounds like a lot of fun. We've also got two Blu-ray collections that have been released right here from Random Space. First up is the Tremors Complete Collection, uh, seven movie collection, which is all of the Tremors, uh, Tremors movies so far. I have only watched the first movie, which I absolutely loved, but I haven't seen um, any of the other ones. Apparently, I think the second one is apparently supposed to be really good. The rest of them were, I think, straight to home media releases. There might've been like a couple of tally movies or something in there. Um, so you've got all of the movies so far kind of bundled in. I think the most recent one 
which is called uh, Tremors Shriek Shrieker Island. I believe that one came out maybe last year or the year before. And I was actually so shocked to see that there are seven movies in this collection, but I'm keen to take a look at them. But the first one is really, really good from what I've seen. It's kind of like a schlock horror kind of movie. You've got, um, it's kind of almost if you think maybe John Carpenter-ish. You've got creatures, like, almost like a creature feature where this town is invaded by these uh, monsters that are kind of coming up from underneath the ground. And uh, monstrous man-eating graboids, they're called. Flying ass blasters and heat-seeking shriekers. Um, so this, this town, kind of this tiny little middle America town has to bandy together and kind of get rid of these monsters, these invaders. And it seems like they haven't done a very good job at that since there's been seven movies of them, but it's so much fun. The first one's great. Really schlocky kind of violence and gore and just fun kind of stuff. It's, it's like comedy, horror, that kind of fun stuff. The kind of stuff that I kind of enjoy. I'm not a huge like gore and slasher horror fan, film fan, but these comedy horror things, I, I find a little bit of fun in because you know, they're quite they're satirical, which is great. And another Blu-ray collection here from Random Space is the HP Lovecraft Collection. This is a collection that has been put together with Umbrella. Crazy. I emailed them, I was like, oh my God, I see you're working with Umbrella now. This is awesome. Two of the, the best distributors in Australia, independent labels, working together. This is great. They're like, actually, we've, we've been working with them for quite a number of years. I didn't realize, but this is very, very cool. This box set is a couple of years in the making, I believe. They've been trying to pull this together for quite a while. It comes with five films uh, from H.B. Lovecraft, as you can see in here. We've got Reanimator, Bride of Reanimator, Beyond Reanimator, so all three Reanimator movies. We've got uh, uh, Dagon and Color Out of Space, which is one, uh, a recent film, 2019, starring Nicolas Cage. Again, I just simply, apologies, Random Space, I, I did not get the time to, to watch any of these, but I'm very, very keen to get into them, particularly Color Out of Space, because apparently it's like very, very good. One of these weird, quirky kind of movies that Nick Cage has been doing of, of recent years. He's been doing a lot of stuff like this recently, and apparently it's quite fun. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. But the great thing about this is that the three Reanimator movies and Dagon are all, pre were all previously released by Umbrella under their um, Beyond Genres line. They were actually the first, I think, two or three releases from the Beyond Genres line. And they're ones that I miss out on getting. So I never got them because I think, I believe, I may be wrong, but I think they're out of print or they're hard to, they're hard to come across in the wild uh, anyway. So it's really cool that there is now a five movie collection from Random Space Media that collects all of those movies together, which is very cool. I mean, I'd love to have all the Beyond Genres titles in the slipcovers all together. But at the end of the day, if I can just get the movies, they're not ones that I would have particularly gone out of my way to get. So if you've missed out on any of those early Beyond Genres ones, and you're not too fussed about having them in individual collections with slipcovers and all that, this is a really, really good choice. And again, it bundles a bunch of stuff together that is quite hard to get your hands on right now. So I think that's very cool. So um, as far as I understand, there might be a couple of other titles that the, uh, those two are working on together. I don't know what they are, but I'm very excited to see what might come out of this partnership. Very, very cool. All right, so that is the lot of titles that have been sent in from Random Space Media this month. Thanks to the awesome team over there for sending those in. While we're talking about Umbrella, let's take a look at the latest batch of Umbrella titles that have been sent in. These are not the latest batch of releases. These are October titles. Next month, Hopefully not as delayed as this month, but I think there might be a little delay as well. A lot of titles to take a look at. So let's kick it off. Let's take a look at these kind of uh, catalog ones that have just been reissued. So first up, let's take a look at a couple of reissues that have been issued by Umbrella last month. Uh, first up is Franco Zeffirelli's version of Romeo and Juliet. This is the, I guess, 1970s version of the film. I absolutely love this. I adore this. This is such a wonderful adaptation of Romeo and Juliet. I'm a huge Shakespeare fan. I love Shakespeare's works and particularly movies that are based on his works. I just, I just adore. I'm a huge fan of the Baz Luhrmann version, uh, but obviously that is not... I mean, other than the language, the Baz Luhrmann version used the traditional Shakespearean dialogue. 
other than the language, it was not a 100% accurate depiction of the text, of course. This one right here is a very, very accurate uh, translation of Shakespeare's text, not just in the um, not just in the dialogue, but in just the, uh, the entire production of it. This is a very traditional Shakespearean take on Romeo and Juliet. That said, I understand this is probably not going to be be for everybody because it does feel very old style. It does feel very dated. Again, even as a movie from the 1970s, it actually feels quite quite old. It's long. It goes for about two and a half hours, maybe a little bit short. It's a little bit shorter than two and a half hours. So it is long and it is slow. And I think maybe if you're not into the whole Shakespearean thing, the traditional Shakespeare performance might be a little bit boring, might not be for you. But if you are into that kind of stuff, I would highly recommend this because I think this is one of the best Shakespearean translations to the screen ever. This has been one of my favorite uh, kind of Shakespearean adaptations for a very long time. This was filmed in Italy, so it does have this really beautiful feel to it all though. So again, you can't get any more traditional than filming Romeo and Juliet in Italy. I mean, it's it's a very stunning movie, but again, it's probably not gonna be for everyone. The transfer on it isn't great because it just is a very dirty, murky movie. But again, this is not an umbrella um, master. This is basically a reissue of an older version of the film that was released by Paramount a number of years ago. Uh, 2013, this version was, was released. And uh, they simply, I believe, just ported over the it's exactly the same disc, as far as I'm aware. Uh, but I love that Umbrella has actually issued it in a different cover, because sometimes when Umbrella does do these reissues, they use the same old cover, and I'm kind of like, oh, I would have preferred like a, something different to be used. But they have here, which is really great, and I actually really, I think I prefer that cover that, um, or that, that artwork. Next up, we'll take a look at this one, which is Frank Herbert's Dune. This, I believe, is the television miniseries which stars William Hurt. Uh, this, I'm not too sure how many parts there are in this. I think there might be three parts to it. Maybe four. It's very, very long. This one was done in 2000. So this is sort of the newer, the newest version of Dune other than the Warner Brothers picture that is in cinemas at the moment. Now, I did not take a look at this just yet. I apologize, Umbrella. But I haven't, I've never watched any of the versions of Dune. But I have never watched any of the versions of Dune, and I do plan on going to see the new version. And I kind of want that to be just like a fresh experience. I don't want to feel like I, I know what's going to happen going into the movie. It just seems like such a big kind of cinematic kind of experience to see that movie. And I want as much of that to be as fresh as, fresh as possible. I did quickly flick through it, but it looks very good. I mean, for a television show from the two, early 2000s, you're going to expect it to look quite nice. Next month in December, maybe January, they're reissuing it again, but combining it with the follow-up miniseries, which is called Children of Dune. So you'll get like the double whammy there in a little box set. So if, you're, if you are wanting to get your hands on this one, maybe just hold off another month or so and you can get that double pack with Children of Dune. If you already have Ch Children of Dune, pick this one up. Next up, we have Umbrella's monthly double feature title. And this one is starring my favorite actor of all time, Humphrey Bogart, I was so excited. These are actually two uh, Bogart movies I'd never seen. I have seen most of Bogart's movies. These two just happen to be two that I have never, ever seen before, which is really, really cool. Uh, they're two kind of a, a bit different. They're kind of different movies to, Bo to Bogart's normal kind of fare. You usually imagine Bogart to be in like film noirs, detective movies, crime thrillers, all that kind of stuff. These are more kind of... Dramatic performances from Bogart, more dramatic films, which I think is really cool. Uh, towards the back end of his career, he started experimenting a little bit more with more dramatic work like this. And very interesting to see him do stuff like this. And particularly as someone who is a huge Bogart fan, I like to kind of explore the different kind of titles that Bogart worked on. Um, but I never managed to get my hands on these, which is really great to finally get uh, these ones um, on Blu-ray. And they both look absolutely fantastic. The transfers are really great and I'm just so happy with them. This is just a one disc collection. So you've got both movies on one disc. Tokyo Joe is a film that is set kind of in the aftermath of World War II. This guy comes home after serving in the war and ends up having to tie together all these leftover pieces and threads that um, were kind of left open in his life when he returns back. I mean, these people went off and fought in a war for three or four years and came back and had to piece their life back together. He comes back to find that his wife 
has married someone else, and he just has to piece his life back together, essentially. I think it's a very, very good movie. And then Knock on Any do Door is very, very different. He is a lawyer defending this um, young street hoodlum, as it calls him on the back of this, uh, who has m been uh, trialled for murdering a cop. He says that he's been framed. Uh, you don't really quite know whether he has or not, uh, but Bogart is his defence lawyer, and it's kind of about how Bogart tries to get this guy off and whether he did murder the guy or not. Both really, really wonderful movies. I'd recommend this. If you're a fan of kind of older movies like that or if you're a fan of Bogart's works, check this one out. Next up, we've got the Australian Blu-ray debut of John Cassavetes' Gloria. I think this is actually the first uh, John Cassavetes movie that I've ever watched. He's one of those figures in cinema that you hear about so often, but I've just never got around to watching any of his works. Uh, this was such a really wonderful film. Really beautiful dramatic film there's some great uh kind of black comedy in here as well and i think it kind of gives oh it gives me an idea of what cassavetti's films are like and i want to try and hunt out a few more of them uh, this one tells the story of this young child whose family is embroiled in the mob and they get the whole family gets murdered by the mob and he ends up getting uh, stuck with this woman named Gloria who becomes his kind of de facto guardian and the mob are now coming after her because she's harboring the child and it's about her just trying to keep him safe from the mafia. I think it's such a really wonderful movie, really touching, really beautiful story and I did actually really enjoy this. I had quite a lot of, uh, um, I won't say fun, it's not a fun movie but I, I, I did really enjoy my time with this. This is one from 1980 so it does feel, it actually feels a little dated, it's funny, the older I'm getting the movies that I grew up with as a kid, like movies from the 80s, they're starting to feel really old now, which is very strange. And this is one of those movies from that time period that does feel a little bit dated. But again, it's enjoyable and it's a really, really great movie and I would recommend that one too. Next up is one that I was very, very excited to get my hands on this month and it is Super Mario Brothers The Movie. This is the Disney, well, I think Hollywood Pictures? It was a Hollywood Pictures film from 1993 and uh, it was a co-production between Disney's Hollywood Pictures and another, another company, Allied Filmmakers. Disney retained the uh, distribution rights to it over in the States, which is why you will probably never ever see a Blu-ray release of this over in the States. Uh, but Allied Filmmakers retained the distribution in international territories, which is why Umbrella has been able to secure the rights to this movie. And you know what? This movie is really really fun. This has kind of harbored this reputation over the years that it's one of the worst movies ever made. It's absolutely terrible, it's shocking, it's dreadful, whatever. I remember watching it when I was a kid and quite enjoying it, so I was excited to revisit this. What has become basically a cult classic over the years, and man, I'm so, so happy to find that it totally still lives up. This is such a fun movie. It's a really different take on the Mario characters, the Mario stories. I believe at the time that they made this, Mario hadn't developed his classic get some me a Mario kind of voice yet. He was just played by Bob Hoskins as this gruff Italian plumber from New York and uh, John Leguizamo plays Luigi, his brother. And um, it's just such a weird different take on it, but it's so good. It's like one of those uh, kind of gritty down to earth kind of takes, but it still feels very over the top and comic booky and stylized. It's very similar in style to maybe like Dick Tracy or The Rocketeer, two kind of very similar kind of new age noir over the top comic booky kind of movies that Disney were making around this period in the early 1990s. And look, I had so much fun with it. You've got um, uh, Dennis Hopper's in there as well as uh, King Cooper, aka Bowser. And it's just such a fun movie. It's just such a fun time. I mean, people are killjoys. And I really love this. I had so much fun with it. And um, I'm so happy that Umbrella has finally got this one out on Blu-ray. Transfer on it's really great too. I'm really, really surprised, pleasantly surprised by how well this one has cleaned up. It looks great. It's crystal clear. It's filmic. It's got inherent film grain. I mean, what else do you want? It just, it looks wonderful. There's a whole bunch of special features on the back here. 
um, a lot of archival stuff, like behind the scenes footage. There's a electronic press kit that would have been sent out to press when the movie was first released. Interviews, all that kind of stuff. There's a few newer documentaries on there too, which seem like they're fairly recent. So I don't know if they were, I don't think they were made specifically for this release. I know there's a UK release of this as well. Came out a number of years ago. They may have been produced for that. Or they may have just been documentaries that were produced for whatever reason, and then Umbrella procured the rights to them. I'm not too sure on the specifics of that, but there is like a wealth of stuff on here. I think one of the documentaries, one of the like newer docos, goes for about an hour and a half. So there's a lot of stuff on here. And look, if you're a fan of Mario, if you're a fan of these kind of just over the top, campy, comic booky kind of movies, like particularly the ones Disney were making in the early 1990s, check this one out because it is, it's so much fun and it is worthy of a title as a cult classic. I love this and I will be revisiting it many, many times. It's so good. It's just a, just a blast of a time. All right, next up, we have got two brand new Sunburn screens installments from Umbrella. It's these are number nine and number 10 from the collection. Of course, Sunburn Screens is their current line of classic Australian films. There have been some really good gems in this line so far. Unfortunately, this one right here, The Right Hand Man, is the first one that I've just not really enjoyed at all. Uh, this is a very early movie starring uh, Hugo Weaving, of course, great Australian actor. It's also got Rupert Everett in there, uh, British actor, and uh, Catherine McClements as well. This is very melodramatic, kind of over the top, sort of romance, love triangle kind of thing, which I just, I just really wasn't into. I'm not really usually into the big melodramatic, over the top kind of things. Um, good performances and all of that, but it was just, the story was just one that didn't really connect with me at all. That said, the transfer on this is beautiful. The transfer on all of these releases have been really, really great. And it doesn't matter the, 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 you know, whether the movie's really great or really not, the transfers are always top notch, which is what I really love about this. This movie is so obscure that I was the first person to submit a review for it on Letterboxd. Just think about that. How odd is that? Uh, but of course, this is one of those ones, as they all do with Umbrella. You've got the reversible cover right there. Uh, I've, of course, got the inverse right there because I like to display them without the, the logos and all that. It's got some great special features in there. It's got an audio commentary with uh, the producer, uh, 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 Stephen Grives, and it's got a conversation with Grives and uh, Catherine McClements on there as well, which is, which is quite good. It's got a theatrical trailer too. But this is definitely a line that you've got to pick up if you've been collecting them all so far. You gotta keep going. Next up, we have got Black and White. This is number 10 in the Sunburnt Screens collection. And this was made in 2002, I believe. That makes this the most recent title that they have put into this collection so far. This is a movie that I'd never seen, uh, let alone I think even heard about. I'm not sure if I'd even ever heard about it. This is wonderful. Such a beautiful movie and I'm so happy because this one I just, I just didn't really love, but this one I thought was just so wonderful. It's this story about this Aboriginal man who is accused of killing and sexually assaulting a young girl. You never, it's based on a true story. You never quite know whether the guy did it or not. He admitted to the crime, but later said that he was pressured into it by the police and that he didn't actually do it. So you never really quite know whether he did it or not, but it kind of follows his story and follows the story of the lawyers and the, the media who are trying to, I guess, get him off or trying to kind of get the true story out. Um, really quite interesting movie, really interesting. The, 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 the one thing I couldn't get behind is you've got Ben Mendelsohn, one of my favourite Australian actors ever, in there playing Rupert Murdoch, but he's playing him as, like, the hero of the story, like, the saviour of the story. I, I, I don't buy that narrative one single bit. But um, other than that, the movie is just... It's, it's really quite wonderful. And you do kind of walk away not really quite knowing the truth of it all. And as all of them, uh, it's got a really great selection of bonus features on there. It ranges from documentaries, new documentaries on the actual court case, interviews with people that were involved in the, in the court case. Uh, there's an electronic press kit on there, and I believe there's like a news report from the time of, uh, of the actual court case itself, deleted scenes, theatrical trailer uh, for the movie, and, and all that kind of stuff too. So really, really good set right there. Definitely recommend that one. I wouldn't really recommend this one unless you're a completist of this line though. Next up, we have got Possession, which is the latest title in the Beyond Genres line. 
This is number 11, volume 11 from Beyond Genres. This is a line that went dormant for a little bit and has kicked off in full speed this last year or so. The cover on this is absolutely gorgeous. Umbrella had actually commissioned new artwork for this release, but I believe the studio or the rights holders behind the movie actually contacted them and said, no, we actually want you to use this because this is the artwork that has been synonymous with the film for uh, you know 40 years, actually. This is made in 1981. So this is um, one of Sam Neill's earliest movies. And it is, uh, it's a lot. It's, it's, it's a lot. As you can see, it's, it's a rated R18+. Plus. It's uh, what you would expect from your Beyond Genres line. I find it very, very hard to explain. Uh, Sam Neill plays this secret agent. He comes home from an assignment to find that his wife wants a divorce from him. She claims that she's not uh, uh, cheating on him with someone else, but he discovers that there is some kind of infidelity going on. I, it's hard to speak about this movie without kind of, because I knew nothing about this going into it, and it's kind of hard to talk about this without kind of spoiling some really... It's such a weird movie that I don't, I don't want to spoil anything. It's kind of like a weird supernatural, sexual kind of psychodrama where it becomes very evident that his wife may, have, may be possessed by some sort of demonic entity and that her infidelities may be kind of um, not quite normal is probably the best way to put it. This is such a really strange, weird movie. Sam Neill, Sam Neill delivers such a crazy, zany performance in this, and it is just a sight to, be to, to behold. I really quite enjoyed this. I've come to really enjoy these kind of weird kind of genre pieces recently. And a, a lot of that is thanks to Umbrella and the Beyond Genres line, because these are usually movies that I wouldn't particularly seek out for myself, but I'm always happy to give a go when they're sent in and, you know, they're released in such a beautiful edition like this. Of course, the transfer is absolutely stunning. There has been, uh, you know, some really beautiful labour love put into the to the remaster of this. Looks very, it's not a colourful movie. In fact, it's very kind of overcast and almost blue. It's got a very bluish kind of tint, but it looks really nice. It's cleaned up beautifully. Lots of like inherent film grain, very cinematic kind of looking piece. And it's just a, it's just a wonderful restoration. There's a great selection of uh, bonus features on there as well, which include, you know, the standard audio commentaries and behind the scenes and interviews and um, all of that kind of stuff. If you love your Beyond Genres line, this is definitely one to pick up because this is, this is one whole lot of movie. Definitely check it out. Next up, I'm very excited to introduce you to Umbrella's later special edition line of titles, which is World Cinema. This is, of course, the very first uh, title in the range. It is Ida, which is a Polish film directed by Paweł Pawlikowski. Uh, as you can probably guess by the title of the range, this is uh, going to be a range of foreign films, world cinema that are going to be released to this, and the possibilities are just really endless with uh, what they're going to be releasing to this. Uh, but uh, I'm very, very excited to see what else comes from this. Obviously, they're going to be releasing a selection of notable world cinema titles, and what a great one to kick it off with. I had heard such wonderful things about uh, about Ida over the years and just never had the chance to check it out, and finally, finally have, and I just adored this one so much. The film is about a young 18 year old woman who is about to enter a convent as a nun, but before she does so, there is one last thing she has to do, and that is go and reconnect with a long lost auntie of hers that she has never met, this is her mother's sister. Uh, she goes to visit her and learns a whole bunch of truths about her life that she never knew. Chief amongst them is that she is actually Jewish. This leads her on a journey of self-discovery and also ends up discovering the real reasons behind the death of her parents. And it's such a, it's quite a hard movie, uh, narratively, uh, narratively a deep film and very hard to watch, but it is just such a, just such a wonderful, wonderful movie. Really great performances and incredible filmmaking. Pawlikowski delivers one of the most visually beautiful movies I've ever watched. It makes a lot of use of negative space. So for example, there'll be scenes where the characters are in the corner like this, and then everything else is just negative. But almost maybe makes the movie feel a little bit overwhelming and a little bit hard to watch, but because it, because it is different to the kind of filmmaking that we're used to watching, and it really does make 
the story feel just a, a little bit more harrowing. It, it helps it kind of, just gives it this very strange kind of feel. But I really loved it, and I'm so happy that I finally got a chance to, to watch this. What I really love about what Umbrella is doing is bringing out so many great movies that I've either never heard of or are finally getting the chance to watch. And discovering so many, I, th I believe this is the first movie I've ever watched out of Poland, and I'm so excited to, to try and track down some more, partic uh, partific particularly anything uh, made by uh, Palakowski, because a uh, really, really terrific filmmaking uh, style in this one right here. Uh, but of course, this comes in a gorgeous slipcover right there which comes out you've got the beautiful artwork there and of course uh, some nice uh, interior art and disc art too uh, definitely pick that one up if you love foreign film and I'm so excited to see where this line takes us going forward and the final title that we've got in from Umbrella this month is Ascendant this is a fairly recent Australian film released in 2020 so from last year of course umbrella makes great strides in releasing a lot of great catalog titles but they also release the occasional new release usually australian movies but this one right here is kind of like a horror thriller kind of thing this uh, young woman she gets kidnapped and put inside like this high-speed elevator in a 120 floor building in uh, in shanghai and she wakes up, she has this strange kind of case of amnesia where she doesn't know who she is, doesn't know where she is, why she's there, where she's been, etc, etc. And the, the kidnappers basically play this crazy mind game with her while she in, is in this uncontrollable high-speed elevator. Really cool concept, and it actually starts out really quite well, uh, but it just spirals into absolute madness the further the movie goes along. It's quite enjoyable, but it's it's not a terrific movie. It's not like a really great movie. Uh, but I'm not gonna like sit here and absolutely rag on it because it is a it is an independent film, and it's probably about what I was expecting from it. If you're into this kind of thing, I would kind of recommend it to you. But if you're not, well, maybe not because it isn't. It really isn't the best, uh, and I didn't I didn't love it. All right, next up we have got a whole bunch of titles sent in here from my pals over at Viavision. We got some DVDs, we got some Blu-rays. First up, we're going to be taking a look at some television. Couple of uh, classic shows right here. Well, particularly this one right here, Rawhide. They're reissuing Rawhide on DVD, which is great. I believe the studio behind this, Paramount, did release these all individually a number of years ago, but Viavision, I guess, has finally got the rights to these and is releasing a c collection of box sets. I'm not too sure how many seasons there were of this. I think there were only eight, so it does lend itself to two box sets of four seasons apiece. This is basically where Clint, e Clint Eastwood got his start, and you guys all know that I am a huge Clint Eastwood fan, and this show is so fun. I've never watched all of it, I've caught bits and pieces of it on television. It's kind of like a bonanza kind of western serial melodrama kind of action adventure series and it's so fun. I really really love it and whenever I just you know brand, like channel surfing and raw hiders on TV I have to stop and have a little watch. Uh, Clint Eastwood is so great in this in here and as a Clint Eastwood fan I'm so so excited to get my hands on the raw hide DVD collection and hopefully I believe they're doing the next box set in a couple of months time when they release that hopefully I can get my hands on that too because I'm very very excited to just absolutely plow my way through this series. It's gonna be so fun. Clint Eastwood in his prime terrific if you love a good Clint Eastwood movie you love West End you like these like serial there were so many episodes of this I don't know how many episodes but there's 98 hours and 57 minutes almost 100 hours worth of content in that alone right there 31 disc set really great get your hands on that next up we have got a classic australian series it is making its way to dvd for the first time in a long while actually these are finally being reissued it's halifax fp they did a kind of reboot series like a i guess a sequel series recently it was a mini series they did on channel nine uh, Halifax Retribution, I think it was called. It was very, very good. I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, I've never watched the original series, though, so I was very excited to get my hands on this. Um, of course, Rebecca Gidney uh, plays Dr. Jane Halifax, who is a forensic scientist, and it's like a procedural 
uh, uh, kind of crime drama show where they're each episode is kind of focusing on different crimes and her dealing with the uh, with the accused and kind of delving into their psyche and uh, discovering you know web of intrigue and lies and mystery and all that kind of stuff and uh, I I think it's really quite good one I hit one I did get a chance to take a look at here uh, I'm very excited to take a look at more of it now this isn't kind of like a traditional series it's very very similar to Prime Suspect with Helen Mirren, which Fire Vision uh, also did release on DVD not that long ago. Uh, each episode is basically like a feature length film. So each season was maybe like four, five, six episodes uh, long and they were all feature length episodes. So basically a series of tally movies. Uh, it's quite common to do here in Australia and in Britain as well, where you have these series which are fairly low budgeted and they do a small number of episodes and they're telling, not so much anymore, but it is something that was a very quite, uh, quite common, I guess back when this was on tally, which was the early 1990s and kind of into the 2000s, they were doing a lot of stuff like this as well. This is collection one. So it collects, I believe the first three series worth of episodes, three seasons worth of episodes. So there's 12 feature length installments in this right here. Um, and the great thing is, is just with all these really great Australian television shows, you get a, hu a who's who of Australian talent involved in them. Uh, these episodes in particular, uh, you get appearances from Hugh Jackman, Hugo Weaving, Guy Pearce, Marcus Graham, Bruce Spence, Ben Mendelsohn, Ryder Mitchell, uh, Brent Klimo and Robin Nevin. So some really, really terrific and very globally well-known Australian actors in uh, in these ones right here. So this is really good. I'm looking forward to getting the second uh, collection of this as well, because this is again, collection one and uh, kind of watching through them. A more recent release is LA's Finest. This is the complete series. It stars Jessica Elbra and Gabrielle Union. This is a spin-off of the Bad Boys franchise. So Gabriel Union plays uh, the character that she played in the um, uh, in the, in the Bad Boys movies. I think there's two seasons of this. <clears throat> Biovision recently released them individually, and now there is a complete box set right here. Haven't had a chance to take a look at a whole lot of it, but it is quite good from uh, from what I've seen. It's basically like it's basically like Bad Boys but if it was a television series and was, I guess, gender bent. Uh, action, drama, comedy mix. And it is actually really quite fun. There's not a lot of, I guess, um, network television shows that I really love these days, but this is actually really quite good. And it's so good to see Jessica Alba doing stuff again too. She is one of my favorites and it's just uh, very, very cool to see her doing a series. So check that one out right there. I'm not too sure if this ended on its own terms or if it got cancelled but this is the complete series right there and you can pick it up right now next we've got a couple of tv series on blu-ray first up the most exciting one is farscape which makes its australian blu-ray hd debut this is a science fiction series that was on i guess in the early 2000s 1999 to 2004 I never really watched it. I saw bits and pieces of it when it was on. I was quite young. I don't think I was really in the right demographic for it. It is rated MA15+, plus, so I probably was a little bit too young for it. I never realized this was an Australian series. This was a series made here in Australia. It was a production of Channel 9, and um, it was a co-production with the Jim Henson Company. So a lot of the characters and creatures and monsters and stuff were all produced by Jim Henson Company. So you got like puppetry, monsters and all that kind of stuff, Star Wars kind of thing, you know? Um, and it is just, uh, from what I've seen, it's fairly comparable to something like, um, you know, Battlestar Galactica or, you know, the Star, Wars, Star Trek series that were on at kind of the same time. You got those really fantastical creatures and, uh, and all of that. This is the complete series right here and it, it collects four seasons. So complete seasons one to four. And from what I understand, the series was just basically canceled. They, I think they planned to do one more season and then the series just got, just got canceled randomly. And the fans for years were saying, we want to see the last season, we want to see the last season. So they eventually did the, I believe the creator of it managed to secure the rights to it many years later and made the miniseries, which is the Peacekeeper Wars, which is included in here as well. 
Now, I did take a quick look at this. These look really great and they feel very cinematic, which is very cool for a, a television program. So if you like this show or if you like uh, similar kind of shows like this, then I would highly recommend getting your hands um, on it because it is really quite fun. There's some special features on there like audio commentaries, deleted scenes, blooper reels, interviews and uh, archival documentaries and featurettes. And as I've just shown you, it comes in this really terrific box set right here with all four seasons and the uh, and the mini series bundled up in there as well. I, I really love that. It's such a beautiful little box set. And one that I've been very, very excited about is one of my favourite comedy series, Freaks and Geeks, the complete series, Collector's Edition, Special Collector's Edition on Blu-ray. This is a show, man, I never thought we would ever get on Blu-ray. They released the DVD a number of years ago, and I didn't buy it, uh, even though I really love this show. I think I was just kind of more like, you know, I, I try not to buy as ma too many DVDs if I can avoid it. I think, I think they released a the Blu-ray over in America, and some part of me was like, well, maybe I'll import it one day, or maybe we'll get lucky one day and someone will release it here. And thankfully, I did hold out because Viavision have just released it on Blu-ray. This is a really great show which started the career of so many great, uh, comedic uh, talents uh, of I guess more more recent years this was released in 1999 that long ago oh my gosh uh, this was produced by Judd Apatow and was created by Paul Feig it's uh, got James Franco, Seth Rogen, Linda Cardellini and uh, John Francis, Francis Daly and Jason Segel as well and uh, this is really where all of their careers mostly uh, kind of started or where a lot of them kind of shot to superstardom and it's just a fun really great coming of age comedy series it's very similar to kind of like a um a john hughes kind of thing like ferris bueller's or the breakfast club but it's got that kind of edgier humor that you would expect from knocked up or 40 year old virgin or any of those kind of judd apatow films and it really does fit in with those movies just so, so beautifully. And the uh, transfer on it is really terrific as well. It looks great. It actually looks quite cinematic, which is fantastic. It, look, it's just such a great show. It's, it's funny. It's heartwarming. It's moving. It's got everything you love in a good kind of warm coming of age comedy drama, dramedy kind of thing. I could not recommend this show highly enough. And I'm so happy that it's finally out now on Blu-ray here. Next up, we've got a couple of multi-movie collections here as well. Of course, they are getting so many great, terrific British series and movies out on DVD at the moment. These only just arrived last week, so I didn't, I haven't had a chance to check them out, but I know enough about them that I can cover them here. Of course, a couple of months back, they released the Carry On Film Collection Volume 1, which was the first batch of Carry On movies, like 11 movies or something like that. This is the final collection. This is Carry On uh, Film Collection Volume 2, which has the following eight movies from the Carry On Collection, which of course are just a really great series of comedic farces and uh, they mostly uh, are acted out by the same sort of actors going in and out of the films uh, sort of like a comedic troupe of these familiar faces that keep appearing in and out it's not always the exact same ones and some faces appear here and then disappear and come back all that kind of stuff um, but uh, they, they're a lot of fun they are very dated as all of this classic like 1960s 70s British humor is they are very dated, so you do have to view them in the eyes of that kind of era. But this is another really great collection of films. You've got like Carry On Doctor, Carry On Camping, which is one of the absolute classics. Carry On Up the Jungle, uh, Carry On Dick, Carry On Girls, Carry On Abroad, Carry On England. That's Carry On, etc, etc, etc. There's quite a bit, as I said, there's eight of them in there. And they're fun. If you like that kind of British comedy, I think uh, you'll have a good time checking out all of these Carry On flicks right here. So again... That one and the previous box set complete the collection of Carry On films on DVD. There's a few uh, do, uh, special features on here, including um, audio commentaries and behind the scenes things, a, a, a little documentary, and it's also got a, a number of episodes of Carry On Laughing, was a television series, kind of a sketch comedy thing. So they're quite fun. I'm very happy to now have all of the Carry On movies on DVD. And also we have the British Comedy Classics Collection number four. I did not get them to send in volume three because volume because the same movies from volume three were issued as part of the blu-ray collection uh big screen british comedy so i got the blu-ray collection of that instead and i will cover that on the imprint 
separate video of, of the imprint titles that I'll be putting up in a couple of weeks time. Uh, but this one right here, as I said when I've covered these ones previously, what they did with a lot of these British series that were so popular back in like the 60s, the 70s, is that they would make a movie version of the series and it wasn't necessarily always like a movie that continued the story of the series. In some cases it was just like a theatrical version of the series where they combined like one or two television episodes into a theatrical feature. Obviously reshot them and reformed them as a movie. I think it was in, in part a way to kind of introduce international markets to these television series or these stories and to kind of market them out there as movies. Just as such a weird, weird thing. But almost every big popular British series had one of these kind of odd film adaptations. So this one includes adaptations of Man About the House, which is this uh, series, was a series about a guy that is roommates with two women. Uh, I think in the series he, uh, they wake up in the morning after a big crazy house party and he's sleeping in their bathtub and they take him on as a roommate because they need a roommate who can cook and clean and do all that kind of stuff. He moves in with them and then of course he tries to get with both of them and crazy hijinks and shoe. Father, Dear Father is, uh, was a comedy about um, a, a guy who has two daughters, a divorced man and his two daughters, his life, trying to kind of raise them both. And then George and Mildred is actually, I think it was a spin-off of Man About the House. They were the landlords to, uh, to, to this trio right here. In their spin-off series, they get kicked out of that building. George and Mildred get kicked out of that building and go and have to live in sort of a lower class area. And it's more about the kind of uh, culture clash between them and the other people that are living around them. So a really decent little co collection right here. Again, I didn't get a chance to check out the movies, but I have seen bits and pieces of the series over, over the time. So I'm, I'm keen to take a look at uh, the movie versions of these right there. Again, all really nice artwork on the inside there and you've got each movie on its own disc uh, there as well, which is uh, really quite cool. And we've got two movies just released on Blu-ray by Via Vision as well. These are both catalogue titles. We've of course got Fried Green Tomatoes, which was released in 91. So this is a 30 year old movie. It's got Kathy Bates, Jessica Tandy, Mary Stuart Masterson and Mary Louise Parker. This is such a beautiful movie. I haven't watched it in a very, very long time. So I'm very excited to get it on Blu-ray right here. Uh, this woman, this housewife, uh, befriends this elderly woman in a nursing home and the elderly woman regales her with stories of, of her past lives or of her life and the people she used to know and kind of um, all these little stories, things that happened to her throughout her life. Just really heartwarming sweet kind of movie. Uh, again, this only just arrived a couple of days ago, but I wanted to get these covered as quickly as possible, so I haven't had a chance to watch it again, but I really, really, really loved this movie when I watched it uh, many years ago. Uh, that's now finally out on Blu-ray. There's a good selection of special features on there too, and it's definitely a decent movie to check out. We've also got One Last Dance, which is a Patrick, a Patrick Swayze movie. I think this was probably one of his last films uh, made in 2003. I th I'm sure I saw this when it first came out. It's about this dance troupe. The director of this dance company in New York City dies and these three uh, dancers who were part of the dance group many years ago are brought back in to try and save the company by performing this dance that they developed while they were at the company but actually never got to perform. So they try and, you know, help the, the company survive without the uh, without the, the company's owner or the head of the company, essentially. Uh, it's a really quite a nice, sweet movie, but it is a little bit... I mean, Patrick Swayze did a lot of just very kind of saccharine, romantic movies. So it's uh, you kind of can... I uh, get the idea of, of what this movie is going to be like, but it's all right. It's a nice, it's an innocent kind of sweet film and uh, definitely worth checking out if you like these kind of dance movies or if you're a fan of uh, Patrick Swayze's works. And with that, that brings an end to this Blu-ray DVD haul video. There were quite a lot of titles to cover in here and I've got quite a lot more to cover as well. So as I said at the top of this, I'm going to be splitting this into another two parts as well. In one part, I'm going to be covering the imprint titles that I do have with me. I am still waiting on a few of them, but I will be covering a couple of imprint titles. And then on a separate one, I will be covering titles that I personally bought myself, as well as a collection of titles that have been sent in from my pals over at kicks.com.au. Once again, you can head over to kicks.com.au 
I use it for you and use the code DAVE15 to get 15% off your entire order. Once again, you are here on the Dave Lee Down Under Extra channel. If you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button down below, the like button, all that kind of stuff, and uh, help us get this channel kind of up and running. I'd love to get, um, I'd love to get the, you know, as many people over here as are interested in these videos as possible and try and get the monetization rolling again on, on these kinds of videos. So thanks again for tuning in and I will see you on the next one. Take it easy. Hey everyone, if you haven't yet, smash that big old subscribe button up on your screen to keep up to date with all my content and hit that like button down below. Also, don't forget to check me out on social media and please consider supporting me over on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month for exclusive videos, early access content and to get your name up on the screen. Thanks again for watching.